Okay, so this is the assembly of my quick and dirty um, floating tap holder I built for my milling machine. Um, the story behind is I have a belt driven spindle on the machine and no encoder um, sitting directly on the spindle but um, just on the servo driving the um, belt transmission. Um, although um, the transmission is a one to one ratio I can't be sure that the encoder reading of the servo is the actual position of the spindle because um, there's some slip in the, the transmission or maybe the um, pulleys are not perfectly the same size so um, no matter why um, if I have some differences between the encoder reading and the actual spindle position um, this will break my tap when, when doing rigid tapping um, there's a G code for it, it's G33.1, which takes a K param. Um, the K param um, specifies the amount of travel um, uh, axis will move um, for each uh, spindle turn. Um, that's what you use for rigid tapping. And the problem is if the um, encoder reading of the uh, servo is not exactly the position of the spindle um, this will break the tab. Yeah, so I came up with um, this little <laughs> quick and dirty um, tapping holder, floating tapping holder and what it does is pretty simple. Um, there's this uh, ER20 collet with an um, 20 millimeter straight uh, shank, which I uh, cut to size and milled a 4mm uh, slot into. And I have this um, part I turned on the lathe and the ER collet will go in here and this will go in the spindle and here we will um, put in the um, tap and it allows the ER collet to just move in this direction, axial, but not radial. Um, so it can compensate any errors of the, um, any pitch errors introduced by um, wrong uh, feedback of the uh, encoder. Um, my first design has but I had this um, keyway. There's a key going into, and this prevents the um, uh, tool holder from um, moving um, radial. But I, I'm not sure why, but this didn't work pretty well because. There was too much friction when um, when there's too much um, radial load, which you basically have when you're tapping. Um, it binds, so it it can't move um, axial. So I came across a different design. Can put this aside, and that's pretty simple. So it's way more simple than shaping the the internal keyway. Um, this this is just a, a usual set screw with the um, pin in front of, and this will go into this hole. <laughs> the hole was already there because I, I drilled it um, before to have. Um, a hole in it where the chips from the internal shaping can go so <laughs> that would be way more simple if I had made it um, with the set screw from the beginning um, so I can screw it in not too much so it's it slides into uh, the slot of the tool holder and will will lock it um, radial in place with but allows the, the axial movement. 
Okay, um, basically that's it. Um, the other parts are just um, springs um, which go into the body to push it out and the screw and the spring will go from here into um, the collet uh, which is hollow. Um, I've pressed in a, a palm bushing. It's, it's, a, it's a plastic uh, bushing where the oops, the spring rests against and there's a normal washer that goes onto the screw. It's a uh, M6 by 70. Um, and you will be able to screw it from the front. So you have um, both springs preloaded, the spring that goes in here and the spring that sits in the body. And this will keep the um, tool somewhere about this position. Um, so it can go this way, but also the other way. So you can compensate both arrows in, uh, when, when um, going down and upwards. Um, that's it. To assemble it. Oh wait. Um, <laughs> There's a neat little detail. Um, I made this little bellow. I printed it. It's a uh, it's uh, out of TPU, and this will go over here to prevent any dust and, and dirt. And you have to um, loop it with uh, grease. And uh, when handling it, uh, you you will always have the grease on your fingers. So this is. I think a neat little detail. It goes over here. It's a bit. Yep, here we are. Okay, so to assemble it, I first screw out the set screw and put this brings on here take some grease put in some grease here and also on the shank um, I tried it with um, whey oil but that's not very good because I think it's um, because the, no, I, I don't know, um, when using oil it, it's um, a bit harder to, to push it in um, than when using grease, so I use grease. Oops. Okay, so drop it in. Okay, so this will always try to push it out. Then we screw in the set screw. Just be careful not to tighten it too much, so it can slip freely. I uh, can see can slide freely. And lock it in place with a it's, it's a regular M6 nut. I turned a bit um, narrow. Okay. Oops. Okay, so it can slide very easily. And then you can insert the third spring with the screw from the front. Preload the, you have to preload all three springs. And then you can.
can screw it in. That's a blind hole, so you can tighten it up. And that's it. This is the tool holder. Um, there will go the regular ER20 um, collet. Put in the tab, um, tighten it down, put this end in the spindle, and it's locked radial but can move axial in both directions so this way and also the way out. Okay, um, as I said this is a very simple design and but it works so I have some footage when um, tapping some M6 and M8 holes, I'll show you now. Thanks for watching.